Hi. It's hard to believe things that you cannot see with the naked eye. My name is Ariana Abari, and I have an invisible internal illness. It is called ulcerative colitis, which is a form of inflammatory bowel disease located in the large intestine. For my project, I wrote a piece of narrative medicine, which is an informative text that expresses the symptoms and outcomes of this disease. I intertwined personal stories with technical detail and taught the chemical background and other treatments as well. I took the time to write this piece as a resource for doctors and other patients experiencing diseases that people cannot see with the naked eye. Hi, my name is Emma, and here is a snippet of what I did this summer for my project through Collegians. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused people worldwide to quarantine, isolating themselves from physical contact with loved ones due to health risks of the virus. Especially during the summer of 2020, many people chose to use social media platforms such as Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook in order to stay in touch with the rest of the world from home. To study the relationship between social media use and reported levels of happiness, I interviewed and administered questionnaires to four high school students from Pleasanton, California during the summer of 2020. I found that as the pandemic went on, the participants reported that their social media screen time increased and that their overall happiness levels decreased steadily over time. Based on the interviews, I interpreted this to mean that as boredom increased, social media use also increased and their ha reported happiness decreased throughout these months. While I hypothesized that social media would help increase happiness in the participants, the data indicates that social media use may be unrelated to or even decrease happiness in situations of isolation. Thank you. I'm Fahad Amdan. For my project, I was interested in how computer science may have implications in sports training. During one of my tennis matches against another high school, my friends and I would predict the matches we were watching. That day, I was sure that our school was represented would win, but was dumbfounded when they actually got swept. To figure out where my thought process went wrong, I embarked on a project to model specific tennis matches and determine a predicted winner, based on a plethora of statistics from a tennis player's game. To begin, I centered through numerous match records to gather a starter data set. A factor of this step was data cleaning, the process of detecting and fixing inaccuracies in the data using a wide variety of methods. After obtaining a reliable data set, I began creating a model with machine learning using linear regression to predict the winner. I also analyzed how close the tennis player's statistics were in a successful player's statistics. Using this in-progress model, I hope to determine what elements of a tennis player's game causes them to be successful. This model could be further used to determine weak points that could be focused on during training to help a player cover all bases of their game. Hello everyone, my name is Jason, and for my Polygens project, I'm developing my very first game. Beak Me. Beak Me is a beast collection game inspired by the dark recesses of mythology and folktale. Create packs with a diverse array of unique creatures you encounter, and battle others in a seamless blend of turn-based strategy and real-time action. Thrust through a void, you are flung into a distant reality far removed from your own. The world you awaken to holds nothing familiar to you. Overflowing with arcane magic, elemental beings, and the wrath of malicious deities, you are a long way from home. Explore picturesque landscapes, delve into the compelling story, and with the aid of your kami, discover the unknown. Whilst you explore, you'll have the company of a diverse and unique soundtrack for every area and encounter. Inspired by 80s tech and orchestral horror, the two elements come together to build the audio of this unique world. For more information about Beacon Me, please visit our website at beacomegame.com. That's beacomegame.com, no spaces and no capitalized, no capitals. You can also visit our merch store, which is also linked to our main website, for unique Beacon Me merch, including hoodies, t-shirts, shorts, and long sleeve tees. Thank you for watching. Hi, my name is Jennifer Sauter, and for my Polygens project, I chose to write a science fiction novella titled Plight of the Eggs. I created a story with two rival nations, Io and Oberon, both located on a different planet. The technologically advanced Io seeks precious metal from the Land Honoring Society of Oberon to create addictive devices called eggs. In exchange for this precious metal, Io is letting a group of Oberonian scientists participate in one of their most groundbreaking experiments, attempting immortality on an Ionian man named Rut. My novel follows the story of a young Oberonian scientist named Sem, as she is exposed to the Ionians for the first time in her life. As she creates a relationship with the test subject, Rut, she begins to question all the bad things she's heard from her government about the Ionians. Through her, we explore the nature of human relationships and what it means to be human. As the end of the experiment grows near, 
Sam begins to wonder, what is the last part of a person that can be replaced before we lose our humanity entirely? Hi, my name is Laura Kumper, and I'm a junior from Jacksonville, Florida, and I've written a research paper on two topics which I'm very passionate about, which are social anxiety and eating disorders, and the relation between them. Although not a ton of research has been done on their connection, and they have often been thought of as separate categories, multiple studies have reported patients with eating disorders sharing comorbid social anxiety. Investigating the relationship between these two focused on a causal relationship or whether there was a common cause overall. Knowing this, we could find more effective forms of treatment for mental health disorders overall, so more research is clearly needed. I'm very happy that I participated in the Polygens program. My mentor was a huge part of my research paper, Christina, who showed me and guided me with helping me write my first research paper. Hello, my name is Mira Coons. And this summer, I decided to do my research project on the impact of COVID-19 on adolescent anxiety and depression. What motivated me to start this project about youth anxiety and depression was the impact that COVID-19 was having on my friends and family around me. I started to see a decrease in social interaction and I saw my friends and family starting to struggle to put a smile on their face. I had originally created a video during the spring of 2020, which was the heart of COVID, but I wanted to make a larger impact on the world by conducting a real research project with raw data. Throughout this project, I surveyed 124 students in Tacoma, Washington using the DAS-21 scale. I also asked multiple demographic questions, like for example, their age, grade, and ethnicity. As you can see here, the majority of the students responding to my survey were ranging in age from 15 to 16 and were in the 10th and 11th grades. I also asked a free response question at the end of my survey, which asked about specific turning points during the COVID-19 where they could feel their emotional and mental health starting to change. As you can see here, there was, these were two students' answers to my free response section. My findings from the research that I conducted was that there was a decrease in motivation in the majority of the participants due to home and school confinement and the decrease of social interaction throughout COVID-19. But overall, most students had experienced mild depression and anxiety symptoms from the pandemic. My findings don't necessarily contradict my beginning hypothesis but it did make me realize that although COVID-19 may have had a severe impact on some people, not everyone experienced COVID-19 the same. Thank you for letting me present my presentation today, and thank you all. Hello, my name is Satvik Sharma, and the research project I completed was the analysis of genes involved in DNA damage and DNA damage repair and their role in breast cancer. I chose to do this project because breast cancer is a major health problem and I believe that studying mutations which occur in our genes that can lead to cancer would allow me to find new patterns and new information that can be useful in the future. In order to complete this project, I used data sets found on ClinVar and I studied breast cancer with benign and pathogenic sets and I used a panther over-representation test to determine whether specific DNA biological processes were over or under-represented in data sets and this gave me a good idea of which genes were or which processes were related to breast cancer. And in my results, I was able to find out that BRCA1 and BRCA2 are the most impactful, while BRCA1 results in protein changes more frequently than BRCA2, and DNA repair is overrepresented 23.8 times as much as expected compared to normal breast cancer-related genes. And I believe that this is a stepping stone for future research projects on specific understudied genes, such as MLH1 and MSH2. Hello, Thanks, I'm Shreya, and the project I worked on this summer was on Karnatic Raga recognition. Indian classical music has been something I've been passionate about my entire life, so I wanted to create a project centralized around this type of music. In Indian classical music, a raga is a collection of pitches, similar to a scale in Western music. I wanted to write a software that, given a song, could identify the raga it was in. That was a raga you just heard. To do this, I decided to use a neural network. I found a Raga dataset online, and I decided to loosely follow a previously created article on a slightly different topic. The very first thing I did was split my audio samples that ranged from a couple minutes to 20 minutes into 30 second clips. And in doing so, I had over 14,000 samples in 40 different Ragas. I used the MEL spectrogram as an input feature to the neural network. 
After training, these are the graphs I obtained, showing accuracy and loss. As you can see, the more epochs you train for, the accuracy increases, and training loss and validation loss decrease. Even given the relatively small sample size, we have achieved fairly high accuracy of over 70%. Given more samples, we believe this can be improved further. I hope to turn this into a mobile app that'll let anyone listen in to an ongoing song or performance and predict the raga for that composition. I believe this will be very exciting to learners of this great art form. Thank you. My name is Mirka Jambudi, and my Polygens project centered around writing a review paper discussing the development of therapies addressing glioblastoma multiform, one of the most aggressive and malignant forms of brain cancer. Despite advancements in technology and treatment over the past century, GVM remains largely incurable. Standard approaches for treatment include surgery and combinations of radiotherapy and chemotherapy. Factors such as the highly selective blood-brain barrier have made treating GVM and other brain diseases extremely difficult. However, immunotherapy and personalized medicine, integrated with chemotherapy or radiotherapy, may become the future for targeting GVM tumors and other brain diseases. My review evaluates the mechanisms and efficacy of standard drugs such as temozolomide and bevacizumab, as well as novel advancements in the field such as the rise of immunology and personalized medicine as a basis for treating GBM. As I just completed my project, I am hoping to submit my review paper to high school scientific journals. I would like to thank my mentor, Nicole Catcher, and Polygens for assisting me with the development of my project. Additionally, I would just like to thank my parents for their support. Thank you.